everyone and welcome back to our kitchen. Well, today is a few days before New Year's, but we decided to make a chicken pozole to receive the new year. Which is very easy, uh, simple, this thing you can make. And it's great just to bring in the new year, some chicken pozole. And it's great to feed a large group of people. So if you're having a big New Year's Eve party, now this is the perfect recipe. Now keep in mind that you can also use pork uh, but we're going to prepare it with chicken today. So let's begin with the preparation. Now for this recipe, you can use those big giant cans of hominy that you can find in your local grocery mm -hmm. store. But today we were at Fry's and they actually had that nixtamal. So we brought about six pounds of the nixtamal, equal to the big cans of hominy that you would find in the grocery store. Now this one does require a longer cooking time than the, uh, the one in the can. So we're going to start by boiling the chicken first. Well, Let's not explain it, let's get into it. Yeah, and these are already boiled with hydrated lime, but since we don't know how it was processed, we're gonna have to clean it. Yeah, Just give it to a good remove rinse. any residue of the hydrated lime because you can't consume that. Mm -hmm. Before we begin, we're gonna start by rinsing this first and letting it soak in the, with a little bit of baking soda to remove the residue. Ta-da! So all right. removed all the yeah, I took out the little packaging. packaging. Now we can get it ready. All right, let's remove this. I'm just gonna pour in the, the tamal into a big bowl. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna rinse it first, and then we're gonna fill it with water to um, leave it soaking in with the baking soda. Can't see me, huh? Trying to get every bit of corn out of there. Mmm, it smells so good too. And it's going to add a lot of flavor to it. But if you can't find this type of mixed tamal in your local grocery store, you can definitely use the, the canned hominy. And um, the canned hominy you would add towards the end of the cooking process because it's already fully cooked. This actually smells really good. Yeah, it does. Let me Is do this going to fill? Mira, da un cabezón ahí, lo voy a quitar. Let's do this. For those of you saying, why is the husband there? He's just standing there. He's just in the way. <laughs> no, he's, he's annoying. Not. Nobody likes him. <laughs> but he says that. He's a big help. He is. When I he's try. not helping me here, he's helping me behind the camera. So he's always helping. Or eating or yes. taking a nap or <laughs> Stop. drinking a brewski. All right, let's take this to the sink. I might have picked a bowl that's not big enough, but that's okay. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. Right, let's rinse this first. And while you're rinsing, you can remove any pieces that are like that. If you don't want them in your pozole, they look like they, they're a little bit rotten or what do you, what would you call that? Uh, not rotten. They're just, uh, in Spanish we say tan pasaditos. <laughs> I mean, they're uh, a little bit Overdue or how would you say that like um, overripe? <laughs> yeah, kind of. All right, so we're just gonna let the water overflow until it's clean. And you can see it's actually cleaning up pretty good. It's really yellow, see? You can see that? And we're gonna And we're using chicken thighs for the pozole because I know you guys can see it in the background a little bit. We're gonna be using some chicken thighs. Ten for pounds this, of uh, chicken thighs for this pozole. 10 pounds of bone and chicken thighs. So it's gonna be reduced a lot because we do have to uh, cook, boil the chicken first and then remove, kind of remove the. Yeah, and I have had this it. recipe with um, breast, chicken breast with boneless and it doesn't taste the same. So you really need that bone to give it that flavor. Yeah. And this recipe you can do between 10 and 15 pounds of chicken. Because like I said, it does reduce quite a bit once you re uh, shred it and remove the bone. So if you want it with a lot of chicken, then um, you can definitely go up to 15 pounds of chicken. As you can see, already see the water starting to get clear. Even the baby um, tamal kind of changed a little bit of color, if you can see, it looks more yellow. Okay, so now we're gonna add the baking soda. Baking soda on there. Just be generous. <laughs> Two, three tablespoons of baking soda. And we're just gonna mix it in. And then we're gonna leave them soaking for a little bit while we Prepare the chicken. Look at that. Ooh, wee. Ooh. Very nice. 
hot. There we go. Ahí está. Ahora, vamos a lavar el pollo. I'm going to wash the chicken. I'm going to give it a run first. This one, you can trim off the excess skin if you like. I'm going to trim it off, but I am going to leave most of the skin on there because that's what's going to add more flavor to the broth as well. But the excess fat, I'm just going to trim it off. Using the wrong knife, I know that, but that's okay. Okay, so it's going to give it a rinse. Throw them in the strainer to rinse them. I'm just getting a close-up of you cutting that, you know, because everybody I wants should to get a cutting board. But you know what? I'm just I'm just gonna do it like this. We're doing this raw, you know. A lot of people is like, don't take the time and go. Ah, let me find a cutting board. Let me do this. Let me do that. Hey, and, you know, when you're in a rush and you have family coming over, hey, whatever works, as long as you're careful doing it. Hey, and less dishes to wash at the end too. So less dishes to wash is always great. Okay, let's trim off all of that. Look at that. And Anna's a pro. Look at her. Stop. Look at that. Just take it, fold it over, and cut it. You know, growing up in uh, in Mexico, uh, my mom and dad would buy the chickens, but they came um, whole. <laughs> yeah, you had to do all the trimming. Head, everything. Nails. It, it was everything. And the, sometimes they had a little bit of feather still, so they had to kind of like pluck them off. <laughs> But it was good. It gave us such a, a delicious flavor because they were. It was like natural. It was all natural. And they were fresh. And these, you just never know how long they've been in the the store, right? <laughs> and for those of you who are saying, "Oh, that's a cool soap dispenser," yeah, you can find that puppy on Amazon. We'll put the link on the description on the video. But yeah, it's very cool. It saves us a lot of times. The last time we had a, it was an elf soap dispenser. Uh, I think my daughter named him Jose, and Jose just, uh, after a while, it didn't work anymore. So we had to retire <laughs> Jose. He was an elf. He was a, a chubby elf with a, a little bit of a brown face, so we bought him because he looked like Dino to us. <laughs> <laughs> so we kept him goes, you know what, we're going to go ahead and adopt Jose here and kept him most of the year. And after a while, he just uh, didn't work anymore. Jose got tired. He got retired. So, hey, just retire, man. And it's good to leave a little bit of fat. Fat always adds flavor to any dish. So we're going to leave. Take a, just, I'm just removing the excess. See, like those pieces? Wait, let me go back here. Show See, those. See, like those big pieces? I'm just trimming those off. Like that. Yep. Like I said, Anna's a pro with the knife, and uh, we all are. I am using just the wrong knife, but my hands are very small. very careful. <laughs> Me acomodo bien con un cuchillo más chiquito. Yeah, anybody can make this recipe. Anybody can do it. Anybody. There we go. All right, now we're going to rinse these with cold water. We're walking everything, and then we're going to begin the boiling process of the chicken. Is good. Yeah. What was that? Frozen chicken. Oh, uh, <laughs> cheater! I wanted to add more chicken. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> I wanted to have a lot of chicken because I like the chicken, not just the mix of eyes. How, how many uh, pounds was it originally? It was like 10 pounds. 10 pounds with the frozen chicken. With the frozen chicken, yeah, I gotta add that extra frozen chicken in there. All right, I'm gonna give this another rinse. A lot of people ask me, ooh, you know, that's a process. Eh. It, just because we're recording, it it seems like a big process, but it's actually not. We are actually just taking a little bit of our time so you guys can see how it's done, what you need to do. But once you get the hang of it, this this is pretty much done with, within the hour. Maybe oh, well, more. it depends if you're making it with Nixtamal or if you're making it with the With hominy. hominy, yeah. If you're making it with hominy, yeah, in an hour, you're done. And uh, this is a 15 quart pot. Yes. 15 quart, so we're going to fill it up halfway with water so we can have room to add the chicken. And everybody's asking, where'd you get the pot? 
we'll put the description in the link. We'll try to find one that matches and we'll put a description because I'm not sure if this part, the maker is still making them, but we will find uh, something close and put it on the link. Fifteen years. <laughs> it was a gift from my sister, and I use it when I make guacamole, and it cleans up pretty well. So I kept it. Yeah, we made a uh, ponche. We made menudo, uh, caldo de res, uh, corn. We cleared up some corn, corn up here. Yeah, it's multi-use. It's been around the block. It's been around. <laughs> And it's actually still in good condition. Look, yeah, it's you know, we, we do take care of our pots. There's some pots that are aluminum that get scratched up, banged up pretty bad. Not just because they're aluminum, but these are pretty much, this is like steel, isn't it? Yeah, it's steel. Yeah. All right, I think we're good right there. Yeah. All right, I'm going to put this on the burner. We'll use the big burner. There we and go. And we'll turn it on. And now we're going to um, prepare the onion and the garlic that we're going to use to boil the chicken with. To boil the chicken, I'm going to use an entire onion and two heads of garlic. And for the onion, I'm going to trim off the top and then take one or two uh, layers of the skin, kind of trim the bottom. Don't trim it off completely because we want the onion to stay whole. All right, there we go. Do you want that to... Um, to stay pretty whole because that's what's going to hold the onion together. All right, so now we're just going to cut it in half. Or you can just make a cut like that, but not all the way, and then cut it like in fourths, but not all the way, so it stays together like this. Peel the garlic. Ooh. And I'm just gonna trim off the tip, just enough to reveal the garlic, so we can get those flavors in the in the broth while it's boiling. And then just remove the excess husk. And I'll do the same with this one. So we're gonna use two to boil the chicken with, and I'm also gonna use another head of garlic when I'm preparing the salsa. So we're gonna use a total of three heads of garlic. Now that may seem like a lot of garlic, but it really does add a lot of flavor to the pozole. So you have to add a lot of garlic for that flavor. All right, I'm gonna put it in the pot. The water's not boiling yet, so we're gonna wait for the water to boil. Meanwhile, we're gonna prepare the peppers. And I'm gonna use these type of peppers, which is New Mexico chili pepper. And this one says extra hot extra picoso but we like a lot of heat to our dishes so i'm also going to add a little bit of chiles de arbol to it this is an eight ounce bag and uh, for the amount of uh, pozole that we're making we're probably going to use about three fourths of the bag i did take one out earlier because i am going to make una salsa de aceite picosita para lo que les gusta más picoso for those of it that like it extra spicy and for you who's asking, what is that? It's uh, like a chili oil. Chili oil chili salsa. Chili oil-based salsa. So meanwhile, I'm just gonna take the stems off, uh, remove the seeds, because you do have to wash peppers too. We need to rinse them first before we soak them in the water. So we can use the water the peppers soak in to blend the peppers. Usually just by removing the stem, all the seeds come out. You kind of have to push it a little bit inside and then the, all the seeds come out. But you can also use kitchen scissors to open it up and just to make sure you have all those seeds removed. There's my trash bowl. Just kind of push, move it around a little bit and all the seeds come out until it no longer makes sound. <laughs> There's one in there. There, two, okay. You don't have to remove the seeds from the chile de árbol, but you can if you want to. This one was already removed. And if you have sensitive hands, you can use gloves when doing this or use the scissors to cut it open and then all the seeds fall out. My hands are used to picoso. Ooh, and it's almost making me cough, so 
They probably are spicy. Well, it says muy picoso. But do you do you want me to add the chiles de árbol? Yeah. Yeah. You can also use chile um, chile puya. Those are similar to uh, chile guajillo, but they are a lot smaller. But they do pack some heat. So uh, be very careful when using those two because they are spicy. How much of that bag are you gonna use? Three fourths of the bag. And I was gonna use the same strainer, but instead I'm gonna use this one to rinse the pepper. And the chili bag. Okay. All right, that's water. Cold water. Put this chiles in a pot. Y los chiles de árbol también. Chiles de árbol too. The top boiling water that we're gonna soak the peppers in. For those asking, where's your husband? Oh, I'm in the uh, background and the, the camera. I don't know if my head's chopped off or not, so I apologize in advance. I just go like this. Cheat <laughs> is on here. It's hot. Careful. Hot, hot, hot. Now we wait and wait and wait. Okay, so let's get started with the salsa here. I did rinse these and I let them uh, air dry. And this one as well. This one I did remove the seeds, but now I'm going to cut it into smaller pieces. So we can fry it in oil and we're also going to use an entire head of garlic and salt to fry the chiles i'm going to use olive oil you can use vegetable oil peanut oil canola oil whichever one you prefer all right let's take this over to the stove and let's begin with the preparation follow me olive oil in olive oil in we need at least about one cup Three fourths of a cup to one cup. And I'm not measuring, I'm just eyeballing it here. We're gonna wait for this to heat up a little bit and then we're gonna start with the, with the garlic. Okay, we're gonna start out with the garlic first. I'm gonna fry this for about a minute, maybe less. Long enough to where it starts to um, kind of brown up a little bit. Anywhere between 45 seconds to a minute, not long. Make sure not to burn it too. If it's too high, then you might want to turn it down a little bit. And we're just going to wait for this to brown up a little bit, and then we're going to remove it, and then add the chia. Let's see, I'm going to start to pull it out. This was about a minute in there. You know, it's nice and golden. Now, at this point, I'm going to turn off the burner. Chia that are already dry. Keep in mind the burner is already off. I turned it off. So at this point, we are going to remove it from the burner, kind of lift it up to move everything around. This one is pretty tricky. If they do start to uh, get too dark, remove them from the oil because you don't want your peppers to burn because if they do burn, the um, sauce is going to have a little bit of a bitter taste. So we're just gonna leave them in here until the oil cools down a bit. This one, you can also add peanuts and sesame seeds, but since we're gonna enjoy it with the pozole, I'm not gonna add those ingredients, but you can if you wish to. All right, now we're gonna set it over here so it can cool down. This is almost beginning to boil. So at this point, I'm gonna add some salt to the water, about a tablespoon. Okay, and uh, we'll wait for it to reach a boiling point, and then we're going to add the chicken. All right. Okay, now that this finally is boiling, we're going to add in the chicken. And once we add all the chicken, we're going to boil for about 30 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes. So 
so the chicken has been boiling for about an hour. At this point, I'm gonna remove the chicken. I'm gonna place it in a bowl so it can cool down. I did leave one of the heads of garlic in the pot so it can continue to add flavor to the broth. Now we're gonna add the nixtamal. Careful because it's gonna flash. And we're gonna boil this for about an hour. Okay, so now we're gonna prepare the chili salsa. The oil has completely cooled down. So now we're gonna transfer the chiles to the blender along with the oil. And salecita. And about a teaspoon of salt. Let's blend these. <laughs> Let's add the garlic. And blend. Okay, this is done. And as you can see, it's not a lot of salsa, but a little bit goes a long way because this salsa is very spicy. I'm gonna get a nice so you guys can see the beautiful salsa. Look at that, look at that. And you really need to get a spatula to scrape off all the sides of the blender. As you can see, a lot of it gets stuck to the side, so. Get as much as you can off, or get a tortilla and just kind of to get the remainder and eat it. <laughs> this salsa is very addicting. That is usually what I do. Okay, I I I confess, I usually do not make this salsa. I get a warm tortilla and just scrape the inside of the blender with it and eat it. Okay, and same thing with the lid. Look at that. Wait, let me see the lid. There it is. And this is the end result. This salsa is very spicy. So it's not for everyone, but if you like extra spice in the pozole, your menudo, your birria, this is the salsa for you. I don't even have no tortillas, though. Mm. No, it's not as spicy as I thought it was going to be. But still good. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, it is. And while all this is happening, we prepare the toppings. We're going to use radishes, cabbage, onion, and lime. Okay, these peppers have been soaking for about an hour, so they should be nice and pliable by now. Time for everything to the blender. I also fished out the onion and the garlic from the pot. I'm gonna blend it with the sauce. I also pulled out the garlic and we're gonna squeeze it in there. And the rest of the garlic. About a teaspoon of peppercorn and about a teaspoon of salt and some of the water that we use to soak the peppers with oh I make a mess
¿Quieres un platito de pozole? Come on over and add your toppings. Let's do this. Time for the toppings. And get out of your way. <laughs> you know, for toppings, I love toppings because when I go to restaurants with Anna, that's all I order, just toppings. Because <laughs> he loves toppings. I love toppings. Actually, that is from one of our favorite movies. So comment below and let us know what movie that's from. You gotta know what movie it's from. I mean, if you love food, if you love classic movies, you'll know where that comes from. Yes. I like to start with the cabbage. Maybe. And then let me get this. I'll hold it for you. So, you know, a generous amount. You can also use lettuce, but we find that the lettuce, it loses its crunchiness once you add it to the pozole. There we go. So we prefer to add cabbage. Right, and then I don't like to and have a you usually add more cabbage. than that. I don't add too much. Add you know. it on there. Okay, there we go. That's it. <laughs> okay. Right. So, and then let me put this up here. Uh, my Cebo onion, la cebolla. Same thing, you know, there's a little cebollita on there. If you like onion, put as much as you want. I love onion. Now, I did taste it. So, it is spicy. Mm. So, be careful when you add the oil salsa. The oil salsa, all right. And then your radish, your rabanos, it goes on there too. Sprinkle those bad boys on there. Ooh. Right. Uh, limon. Limon. Let me just grab one limon. All right. Mm, that looks delicious. It smells delicious. And uh, should I add the chili oil or the flakes first? Put some of the uh, flakes. You want to add chili oil? You don't want to taste it first? No, it's good. It's okay. good. You want to add flakes too? Yeah, it's tomato flakes. Are you seeing the flakes? Yeah? Flake me more. Flake you some more. I'm so flaky. <laughs> what about oregano? I think we'll oregano. Oh, yes. Gotta have some oregano. So, oregano. Some uh, fancy Tupperware. So, and the link to the description to these Tupperwares will be on the video. <laughs> I like that. I like my oregano. You can also use the uh, seasoning they have for um, the menudo, menudo mix. Menudo mix to garnish it. Oh my goodness. And this is the the oil. So this is optional. You don't have to add this chile to your pozole. This is just optional, but it makes it delicious. So we're gonna go and do this bad boy right here. Oh, he's asking for it. All right. That's a cucharita, oh my goodness. Tu tostadita? Tostadita is right here on the side. I, I, I'm going to get you a glass of water. I got some ice cream. <laughs> all right, so we uh, mix this all together. Get that combination in there. Oh, it smells good. My mouth is watering. It's going to be burning in a minute. <laughs> all right, here we go. Here we go, guys. It's hot. And then... Um, <laughs> Mmm. Is it spicy? It's a good spicy. Yeah, you know I like spicy. I'm not even trying to tostar yet. But that's because I added chili oil. I like my pozole spicy. It's good. Mm. Good. Mm, it looks really good. I can't wait to try it. It's delicious. With your tostadita, you just... Classic. Mmm. Okay, guys, well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, say bye for now because we, I'm about to try this. I'm about to, oh, you can give, you can let me try it from yours? Yeah, go ahead. Oh. I don't have cooties. And if you do, I already got them. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Pollito. Oh, my goodness. It's good, huh? It's good. That's spicy. It's spicy good. And like I said at the beginning of the video, it's the easiest recipe to make. 
It does seem like it takes long, and that's only because we're recording a video and taking our time. Make sure you guys see the it's process. It's really good, though. But it's so easy to make. And I hope you guys give it a try. If you do, comment below. Let us know what you think. Let us know when you made it. Anything else that you did different to it. Hey. Yeah, we'd like to know. It's all fair, yeah. Thank you guys for watching, and we wish you a very, very happy, happy new, new year. year. See you next year. <laughs> it is really good. Delicious. Oh, did you get a drink? Thank you.